Good evening. My name is Nora. Welcome to the Princeton Public Library. Today, we're very pleased to partner with So Percussion and highlight performances from participants of their Summer Institute. The So Percussion Summer Institute, or SOCI, is a program that has run now for 12 years and is normally held at Princeton University, giving percussionists and composers an opportunity to learn, collaborate, compose, and perform both original and reinterpreted works. This year, as with many other things, it moved online, and that move allowed it to expand even further, allowing additional types of musicians to participate. Before we begin, I would like to go over a couple of logistics. Uh, tonight's program is set up as two sessions that will immediately follow each other. The first session is the one we're in now and will include, after this introduction, eight pre-recorded performances from SOCI participants. After that, you will be automatically brought over into the second session. There may be a slight delay. The second session will include a live discussion and Q&A with members of SO Percussion and participants of the Institute. If for some reason you aren't brought over, please notice in the top left of your Crowdcast screen, you'll see an option for sessions and you'll be able to manually choose the Q&A portion if again, for some reason, you're not brought over automatically. Second, we will be leaving the chat feature open during the performances. We will have members of the Institute in the chat offering some additional information and insight on the performances. So please feel free to interact with them on chat and um, leave any comments you have. Again, we will have a live Q&A session afterwards, so please feel free to save your questions for that portion. Thank you again so much for joining us tonight. And without further ado, please join me in enjoying the So Percussion Summer Institute performance.
Hi, I'm Eric Chabich. I'm one of the members of So Percussion, and um, I'm not around as much with the Summer Institute this year because my son Roman is 13 days old. He's down for a nap right now, and uh, this is maybe the most time I've had for a little music making in the last two weeks. Um, so I wanted to contribute a small performance for today. Um, this is the Pauline Oliveros piece, Rolling Meditation, from 1989. And uh, for those who aren't familiar with Pauline Oliveros, she um, was sort of a revolutionary mind in this field of deep listening. Um, so she would lead workshops where people would get together and listen very intently to the environment around them uh, before they would engage with making music with it or um, thinking of it as a musical performance. So um, for this performance, I'm going to listen to this stock pot right here. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
didn't have to do that. Show me your hand.
they like. Show me your hands. Gun, gun, gun! That many times. You're going to know his name forever. Show me your hands. Gun, 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 gun! gun. Hello, everyone. All right. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We uh, are really thrilled to have So Percussion partnering with us. Um, and we're going to invite some of the members up on screen with me to get started. Um, there was a really wonderful discussion going on all throughout that performance. Uh, this is my third SOC concert, um, and I've always been amazed at um, just the kind of the diversity of their presentations, their creativity, and their ability to work with a, an astonishing array of materials. So it's no surprise that they were able to swap so easily um, into this virtual realm. Um, so I am going to call up uh, Shelby Blazinger McKay, who is the very patient uh, operations director for So Percussion, and uh, we will have her introduce the members of So Percussion who are here and they're going to talk to you about these uh, pieces and uh, answer your questions. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see the ask a question button. You can put a question in there and then other attendees can upload it if they want to also hear that question answered. So um, please, please feel free to do that now. Thank you. Hold on one sec while I get Shelby up here. Hi, can you hear me? I can, hello. Hi, everybody. So glad everybody joined in. Um, we're thrilled to be here once again with the Princeton Public Library, virtual. Um, it is amazing. I've actually, Nora, you have one year on me of being around SOCI. And it's, I just started working with SOCI being the program coordinator in 2018. So this is really exciting. Um, before I kind of talk about the Institute, if there's anybody new here who doesn't know who we are, I just wanna introduce and bring up some of the other members of SO who are gonna talk, if that's okay, Nora. Um, so I wanna bring up Josh Quillen, Jason Truding, and Adam Slowinski, and just have them on screen to, help answer anybody's questions. We're <laughs> while, we're, while we're waiting, Brooks, that's, that's a funny question. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, so as everybody's coming up, can, um, for anyone new to the SOCI realm, SOCI has been, this, <clears throat> is a really cool two week summer intensive chamber music festival and this year is no different. Um, we, of course, planned for our normal Princeton takeover in July, starting last year at the end of our SOCI in 2019. And, you know, February came along and we knew we were gonna figure out what we needed to do to be our virtual self. Um, and so I guess that all started with one, hoping that our awesome participants who applied back in the fall would still join us, but then thankfully reinventing what it means to be virtual. And I think the three here can attest to the many, many brainstorming sessions.
places we always perform at every year, which is the Princeton Public Library and many other awesome Princeton uh, businesses. So this. Oh, such a good speech too. Shelby. <laughs> she was killing it. <laughs> she has been our mission control during SOCI. Um, and so she's like, SOCI online just wouldn't have worked without Shelby. So the <laughs> irony here is, is, is really hard to, hard to see happen in real time, but. Well, it's maybe a good time to thank Shelby for being such an incredible yeah. program. Cool. Let's talk about her. Yeah. While she's down. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. It's easy. She's, she's, um, I mean, she does our operations stuff throughout the year when we're not doing our online festival. There's, there's LC. Um, <clears throat> and you know, she's the reason we get anywhere we go. She's the reason anything that a hall needs to know about us gets known. Um, and she's just a good hang and she's a great percussionist too. So she, she plays with us a ton. Um, and this online soci, she's been sort of managing all the breakout rooms and zoom and it's been absolutely flawless. I mean, yeah. honest to God, my, I, my, I, not that I was skeptical, but I was like, something's going to go horribly <laughs> right. And the idea that this is the first thing that's really gone wrong, yeah. um, to me is just blown my mind. So, she, and, and she, it's a, just a testament to Shelby's thoroughness and thoughtfulness in the way she's cared for the students during the last two weeks. So big, big props to Shelby. Maybe. Oh, hey. Yes, we've got you back. Really hey. Gone, don't worry. <laughs> we didn't really talk about much while you were gone. Don't worry. It's the rain. I don't know. But anyways, we have really cool music, right? Uh, <laughs> we're going to have really cool music on Saturday, too, with more salon submissions. These are just like the starting, like, just thought they really meshed well together. And so I thought it would be a really cool program for anybody who comes to our Princeton Library concert knows that it's an intimate setting and it's love amazing in that way. And I thought these pieces would really fit that. And I think I want to give like, guys, whatever you were talking about, feel free. We were talking about Go you, ahead. Shelby. Yeah. We were talking about how awesome you are, Shelby, so we can move on. <laughs> but I, actually, so I think when you got cut off, you were giving props to Princeton in general. And I, I was thinking, um, just how special this library concert is every year. And I'm sitting in Princeton. And actually I was thinking that if we were all gathered in Princeton this year, if we were outdoors, like a, a thunderstorm came yeah. in the middle of it. So I thought, I know. I'm glad we're in this intimate yeah. space, <laughs> but presenting inside, um, not outdoors, presenting inside the library is also really wonderful. So thanks Nora for having us um, at the space in general, but, but in this virtual space, um, it's a it, meaningful relationship. Oh, it's always our pleasure. And um, I'm glad that we had so many people who were able to join us, even if it's a virtual version. And again, I mean, the it's so good to have you all gathered in the community room and having all that energy together. But there was just something about kind of these intimate performances that really kind of brought it a different view of, of what percussion can be and, and these different types of music. So I'm in some ways really glad we got to have this opportunity as well. Um, shall we? answer a couple of questions while we're here. Yeah, that'd be great. I think that'd be great. So our first question we've already answered, which is Shelby, how are you so cool? <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. So we, we talked about that. <laughs> so we'll come back. Five um, votes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the second question uh, was about recordings of these performances. And actually this um, this recording of this whole concert will be available post uh, post this session. Uh, it'll be available on our Crowdcast and, um, and we'll Kind of link to it and um, so you can also link to it as well so if you missed uh, the beginning or any of the sessions you can come back to it awesome. um, so our second question our next <laughs> real question i suppose <laughs> uh, uh, in clapping music what kind of processing if any did you use on the audio clips i imagine that every person's room setup was different with the different room acoustics did you try to normalize that in any way um, so I worked on clapping music. Um, I guess honestly, out of the festival, it's the only, it's the only video or music that I've had a really intense chance to to help put together. Um, so two weeks before the festival, I asked all of our participants to record a part, and just send it to me in landscape, and that like follow this like video that Jason and Josh made, and I wanted it to be like purposely vague because I was really curious what would happen. I even asked performers to face certain directions and like, but 
<laughs> no, no, Shelby. <laughs> I'm sure was Shelby's she, about the, to be on, but I, I thought just that, I think I mentioned in the chat that this is like a soci tradition, group clapping mm -hmm. music. And um, in Princeton, usually in addition to the library, we pop up at the Record Exchange, which is an amazing store in town. And we do a group version of clapping music. Um, and then sometimes we do it at Small World as well. So it's kind of a, an awesome tradition of clapping music uh, at SOCI. So it's nice to to have it here as well, virtually. Yeah, and the the uh, just to sort of keep answering, I'm 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 gonna answer your question, but not about what Shelby dealt with. But in terms of the the stuff that's been happening at SOCI has been a lot of online collaboration, and so and in the groups that I've been working with, it was something that didn't real I didn't really realize I would have to do, which is kind of be a producer in a, in in some sense and and deal with yeah, oh my gosh, somebody has there's wood blocks here in this house and there's wood blocks here in this house and they're recording completely different rooms. One was recording a kitchen, something was in their bedroom with carpet, you know. And yeah, it's been having to really get good at um, trying to EQ things and deal with compression or not compression, you know, all of those things that I, I knew a little bit about, but I really had to learn for this particular festival in order for the recordings that you're going to hear on, on Saturday um, to all have some semblance of a live performance that you might hear at SOCI, you know, um, if you were in person. Shelby's back! <laughs> I wonder if the storm has like come to me. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I think I think I think Brooks is just keep just keeps putting you in a breakout room. That's what's happening. Trolling. <laughs> the breakout room. Um I forget if did, I, did the did the answer happen or did it leave? I forget. Ah, okay. Oh, Jason's in that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, the short, short answer is no, I didn't normal. I didn't try to normalize it. Um, I wanted it to feel like you were hearing just lots of people clapping in their spaces. Um, all I did was try to line it up because everybody's videos started and ended at a different time. And I just, if a video was maybe a little quiet, depending on just the quality, I would just bring it up as if those people were in the room together and um, just really kind of level the playing field for the sound. But the only thing I really wanted was if you had headphones, I want you to hear one side or the other, just for funsies. Shelby, <laughs> it's, interesting to, it's interesting the story you told there because I, I think I knew you were working on it, but it is interesting to me that you didn't mix anything because we, in-person SOCI is everybody coming in with all of their individual selves. Like there's like from all of their different places and they meet at SOCI the first day and it's like, oh my God, they're all here, you know? And over the course of two weeks, they all sort of trade their ideas. They all become a little bit better versions of themselves while sort of nudging up against each other over the course of two weeks. And it's, I'm really actually glad to know that story, Shelby, because that is the first introduction to each other that they had. And yeah. so it's, that's awesome. Very I like cool. to, I like to say it's like, it's not like you had this really collaborative moment doing this, but you made something and you're a full on group and you're playing this music. And it's, I just wanted it to feel really like there's no, there's no um, tricks. It's it, you're there and you're playing and it's a really cool thing. And it's everybody, it's all our composers, all of our players, you're just it's a it's a really cool piece of work and i just wanted it to sound like that would be what people heard yeah love it oh yeah it was a lot of fun it was fun putting it together <laughs> um we have a, a question about um about that last piece uh which you all performed in uh very powerful and as relevant now as it was then and even before then um can you talk about the your experience learning and performing that piece yeah um you're talking about darian's piece right with uh, with our performance yeah i mean darian is a, a really really compelling um a person and creative person and composer. And um, what I appreciated so much about this is that he came into our festival and, and as Josh was saying, everybody comes in, people don't really know each other yet. Um, and Darian really came in and was like, this is what I want to say. He didn't know us that well, you know, and he doesn't, you know, he didn't know if people had, what people's like thoughts about politics and stuff like that were. And he was like, this is really this is an important thing to me. This is the kind of thing I'm trying to say. And we were like, yeah, absolutely, let's do it. And 
Um, he, he did another piece at that same so see somebody had put the title and I uh, I don't remember the exact Kid Brother Gunner. Kid Brother Gunner. Or Kid Gunner. Just, Sorry, Kid Gunner Brother. Kid Gunner Brother. This incredible piece where two musicians are playing a version of Patty Cake and starting to talk. And as they talk, you realize that they're, ta they're, they're like kids talking about guns and gun culture and gun control and um, thing and like um, the drills that kids have to do. My son had to do them when he was little. These like, you, you know, these like, um, I forget what they call them, but the, the basically the shooter drills. Lockdown drills. So, yeah. Thank you. Lockdown drills. And um, so um, Darian really came with this uh, energy, wanted to do this work. And we said, absolutely, you know, SOCI is absolutely a place for all kinds of statements, creative statements that people want to make. And over the course of working on the piece with him, we learned more about the incident that the piece addresses with Stefan Clark. And as you could hear, a lot of the details are in the piece about actually the incident and the fact that he had a white <coughs> iPhone that the police officer claims to have mistaken for a gun and all of these kinds of things. Um, I just, it was a very powerful experience because the, the, the details of the incident were in the piece. And so you are watching the piece and you're, you're getting it. Um, so that, that was my experience. I had an interesting experience watching it um, because I'm not sure I'd watched it front to back since we recorded it. Um, I had this, in, this instinct to be critical of ourselves, of our performance early on. I was like, oh, I wish we had more time. You know, we were premiering it on a night with 10 other pieces and I thought, Oh, I wish we, you know, I wish I wasn't looking at my line so much. I, like I was a little critical. And then it hit a moment where um, I started to have a very out of, not out of body experience, but I started to look at it without critical eyes anymore. And it started to just transcend um, any kind of like, oh, we could do better, we could do worse, and just became this really powerful statement. And I feel like at SOCI so much, um, and uh, and a lot, of, a lot of the speakers at SOCI have been talking about the importance of these really big, bold, ideas and big pictures and not getting mired in the details so much. And I had that experience of, of being in the details, which are important, and then and then zooming out and and and, and being really affected. Have, I was worried that I was still going to be crying when I got on yeah. this, this talk, you know, it's like it had an, and I don't get that way watching myself play. That's not the thing that usually happens. But I, I, I will say, um, being a Princeton resident, I thought it was really wonderful to program on this show because um, so many of the demonstrations that I've been a part of in Princeton have gathered at Heinz Plaza right by the library. Um, I, one of them, um, my family got there while the march had left and we thought we missed it, but it turned out um, they were coming back and a lot of the demonstrators were lined up outside the library. And so some of my um, quarantine experiences have been um, at the library, still, still renting books and still having the relationship that I always have with the Princeton Public Library, but also the library as a gathering place. And during these times, a gathering place for um, solidarity ar around these themes, around what Darian was trying, what is, is not trying to talk about, what Darian is talking about. Um, so I felt really great. Um, the, the community of Princeton has been, um, I, I've, I felt really lucky to be part of an active community in Princeton right now around these issues of Black Lives Matter and to present it in this this space felt really wonderful. I have nothing more to add. I mean, I did to both what they said, but I, I would just say, I, I feel dumb adding this at the end of those both beautiful statements about, about real life stuff, but just about music, that piece is hard. It's really <laughs> hard and and like, I, I mean, there's parts of it watching that live performance, Jay, where I had I had a moment. There's one, I think there's a the speaking and the rhythm. Yeah. Yeah, like the or sorry, like speaking and hitting something in rhythm is really difficult. And those rhythms are really hard that he wrote in there. And I see this moment where I was like, I don't I it's hard for me to inhabit the space of all of the emotional stuff. And I'm literally just like, one, two, three. And that's the oh. like as a live performance and a sight reading thing, I think if we had a chance to do it again, I would, I would be more aware of those moments because it is Darian is is a really detailed and thoughtful and like really rhythmically complex composer. Um, well, in the rhythm, all the other stuff. So, some of those rhythms I think you're talking about, Josh, are so difficult because they're they're transcription of the gunfire, right? So I remember right, these right. like, and we have to play it in unison. So I remember these moments of like, um, mm -hmm. like. Let's just be together, you know, like these, these yeah, really, um, yeah. crazy moments that feel different than a lot of other music. And he true. he could have written approximate random gunfire, you know, but he didn't. And that that's the thing I think like that what I love about Darian and his approach is that I don't know, it just sort of allows for a lot of other 
complexity that you can't get otherwise. And I, I just really appreciate about that. About I appreciate that about him. Excuse me. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for not only that really incredible piece, but for those really thoughtful answers. Um, I, I saw a lot of people, myself included, um, getting pretty affected in um, in the comments and and watching that. Um, so that's a really strong way to end uh, our, our concert today. So thank you for that. Um, on a different note, um, <laughs> what? Uh, so you moved online this year, uh, 12th, 12th year, totally different. Um, What's uh what's been uh what surprised you about SOC this year being online or has anything kind of remained the same? How's the experience? What has surprised me is how many things are the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, because because truthfully, I mean, so I think most of my I think all of my surprises have been pleasant ones because there is this fear that the remote format is just not going to translate in the way that people connect with each other, in the way that they bond and collaborate. And um, there are obviously, of course, are things about it that are different, but it is, our thesis was like, it's possible. It, it, it's possible, it'll just be its own thing. And I have to say one of the most moving things for me watching the, the performances was that, you know, it's possible to respond to the circumstances that we're in in an aesthetic way that is moving and makes you appreciate of course there are many terrible things about this moment um but that's it's uh the saying we've been using is we're not all in the same boat but we're all in the same storm and it's there's none of us have ever experienced anything like this in our lives where people all over the world are experiencing this difficult thing at the same time and these performances these intimate performances and people making pieces that feel like somebody sitting alone in a room but having a beautiful moment like responding to the moment and not only clinging to what we had before we wanted this festival to feel like let's have something in this moment let's not only be nostalgically hanging on to something we can't have right now we were we were hoping that would work and translate and it, it so far it has felt like it has and i think that's been really delightful for us yeah, I, I was just gonna, I agree. We've all been chuckling where like, you know, it got to Tuesday of the second week and, you know, there's different pieces that are tricky or there's, you know, these wonderful tech difficulties that are happening. It's like, that would be happening if we were all in the same room at Princeton too. Like it's all, you know, this is just what happens, you know? Um, but I will say what has been wonderfully different this time is that um, the focus has changed a bit from, uh, actually, as you could tell from tonight, a bit from just percussion playing um, and I, I, I love percussion playing and I do it and I love talking about it, but but the emphasis has been less on like chamber music percussion ensemble playing um, and more about music making. And it's um, there's been some wonderful instrumentalists who aren't percussionists here um, that have really brought a, a, a different feel to the festival. Um, and so not only to have, you know, composers who are also performers like Brian tonight and Devin tonight on Chakohachi and guitar, um, but you know, wonderful, players, um, you know, Aslan who plays modular synth or um, uh, Neil who's a guitar player or Raquel who sings and plays uh, piano and synth or, um, you know, I'm going to forget some other really cool <laughs> folks, you know, who just who aren't, aren't percussionists who we've got to hang um, with a lot. And that's, Su that's like Suyan really has the, the hang the hang Absolutely. I've been hanging yeah. with Suyan in a lot of my, my performances or a lot of my pieces and she plays a two stringed um, uh, traditional Korean uh, bowed instrument. Um, and that along with, I mean, percussionists in general, we're, you know, I mean, Eric's playing, you know, his his soup bowl, his soup pot, you know, his stock pot, yeah. You know, so we in general, like percussionists are playing a bunch of, of you know, um, an eclectic gathering of instruments, but um, having the other instrumentalists, I think has been an amazing um, addition and something that I think we want to make sure to keep um, because it's made for a really special feeling festival, I think. Well, that actually feeds into another question we had, right? Uh, actually asking if we, if this would change the character of the festival, right? It, the question was, because Susie, I hope you don't mind me, Nora, just working this in. Because Susie has moved online this year, I know you have begun to accept more instrumentalists besides percussionists. Will this change how Susie happens in the future once we return to normal life? We were actually just texting about that uh, with each other as this uh, show was happening. Um, and I think I think the, the answer is some version of yes, <laughs> you know, because it just feels like 
Um, making a space for creativity feels like an ongoing mission for SOCI. Um, I mean, truth be told, the, the, the very big first mission of SOCI was, hey, let's have a place for percussionists to do, forgive me for putting it this way, but more than like counting 300 bars in the back of an orchestra. Because when I was a student, most of the festivals were orchestra festivals and I wasn't, they're wonderful, but I wasn't super, that wasn't my thing. So I didn't go to any. And so we sort of started this and we're like percussion chamber music, people having parts with notes and learning how to play together, all this stuff. That'll always be part of SOCI. Um, but this is pretty cool to have this other, <laughs> all this other stuff. Yeah, I gotta say, I mean, I've been thinking a lot about of this stuff and i know that the the four of us for sure have had a lot of just anxiety about like what it means to how do you function as a new music group in general during a pandemic and an economic shutdown like all of these things have been so crazy to think about uh and then soci comes and i i've been hearing you know you hear the phrase like we go back to normal life i think that was that was the question and i, I don't want to sound disingenuous or glib but like we were sort of forced to look at this year soci like we didn't have a choice to go to say, well, let's just wait till normal life so we can do SOCI in person. And in a weird way, that extreme limitation kind of forced us to deal with stuff. And we talk about this every SOCI when we deal with composers, like limitations are good. Like they're really, really good. And that this is the most extreme limitation we have ever had put on us as an organization and especially during a SOCI. And I think that what I'm blown away by is that, you know, I'm proud. I'm psyched about the new normal. Like if this, if this is part of it, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to live online for the rest of my life, but if this is part of it, I'm game. I just never would have imagined in February that this ever would have existed. And that's the thing I think <laughs> that to me is the, like, I'm pumped and I'm so inspired to see the students, the way they're all dealing with each other. Um, and just seeing this as less, less as a, like a, like a, uh, a temporary like band-aid we have to put on something and more of an opportunity this we got to use this as a superpower and i really every student i've worked with has sort of donned the cape and yeah. used the sort of zoom, like use zoom as a superpower and it's blown me away so yeah i, agree. I just want to chime in totally josh and to say i i i definitely i think we all do i definitely want to be in the room with people again and make music that way mm -hmm. but also making music that adding this way of making music with people. Like I've talked to so many students who are just like, yeah, I kind of wish we were all in the room together, but I couldn't have been there if I had to be in Princeton right now. Like I, you know, I've been able to do this because it can be online and I can also be doing this or this or this. And that, that's that been, I hadn't thought about that side of it so much um, because truth be told, I'm, I'm really hungry to have like human, we... a human interaction with music. Um, but, but that's been amazing to make, music virtually and, and what Orson said to think about new ways to present it has been pretty awesome. Yeah, we have international students. We have a student in Trinidad, I believe one in Venezuela, Australia. people all over the United States, Australia. Yeah, of course actually, Sam Chrysler has, Sam has been getting up at like... Yeah, he's taking our classes but, in the middle of the night. He's reversed his schedule for two weeks so he could do the Hey, it's, it's breakfast for him right now. Yeah, yeah Sam. <laughs> Are you here having breakfast, Sam? <laughs> Get a flat white, Sam. Get a flat white. <laughs> and I would just chime in to follow up with the original question, and then and then some is, um, it's it is surprising. Most of Soci is very similar to what it is in real life. Um, the difference is, you know, we we're not moving gear all over Princeton. We're not getting that moment to be around people in Princeton, just like asking us questions about what we're doing. But thankfully, because we can take this online, we can answer those questions in a new way. And we can still tell people about what's happening. We can still put on, maybe, honestly, I think with this concert, our concert at the start of the festival on the 12th, and then our concert on um, Saturday, I, I feel like we really are putting out the same amount of music, which usually would have given us maybe eight. we last year we did um, 10 concerts, I think, in Princeton during the two weeks. And I think with Saturday's um, long kind of marathon style concert, we're calling it the day of awesomeness. I think we're still putting out this like massive amount of music, 19 of which 19 pieces of which are essentially premieres and the workshop premiere or a world premiere. It's still just like a really cool thing to see. Mm -hmm. the same amount of cultivation and collaboration in just a new way. Yeah. 
it's been really cool to see that that stay the same. Awesome. Okay, we're gonna ask our last sort of formal question here um, before we wrap up. Um, the question about um, how do you go about curating uh, so many submissions? Can you talk about kind of that process, uh, the submissions you're getting, kind of how you how you go through that process? Um, well, I'll talk a little bit about it and then let um, the guys kind of chime in with how they feel. Um, so a few months ago when we were deciding how to build SOCI, we came up with what we could imagine potentially five different styles of concerts. Um, so we were like, okay, you can make a concert out of past work that's written, a concert out of new work, a concert out of um, one of the members, Jason, up. up above me, um, Jason's work called Go Placidly with Haste. Um, all plays, like what we saw at the beginning of this, like clapping music, where we just invite everybody to play a piece that we know is just gonna be this awesome experience. We actually did two all plays, I think at Princeton Library in 2018, by, and one of them was by our composition director, Andrea Mazzariello. And then we had salons where we were like, send us what you're doing. And um, I think, when we came up with those ideas, we, were, we weren't we were sure if we were gonna intermix them. Um, but then as we started seeing what was gonna get created and we still had some students in Princeton wanna write and we had new comp composers come in when we opened up our applications again, because we, we could get more people to come hang out and do more stuff with us. Um, we started realizing that when we were making our concert on Saturday, our day of awesomeness, we could just like intermix all these different styles of music and try to find ways that, oh, maybe this one, it's it's got a guitar and electronics, but this one, it has this like beautiful vibraphone marimba classical style of percussion. And wouldn't it be cool if they just like pair with each other? Cause when you're sitting here watching a video, it's intimate no matter what, cause it's, you're just watching it and you're seeing it happen right before your eyes. And although you can't see the musicians breathing together or doing something together, there's still so intimately so much about what created that experience of what you're watching. And I, I think it just came out of like, oh my gosh, we got all this music. Let's start seeing what it is and just watching it and putting, seeing what would sound cool and how people maybe have really good different like closenesses. Like I thought um, Gavin's piece, Gavin's piece, Jot. And Louis, uh, Lewis's piece, Run On Spin Out, there was something similar about it. It was really eerie and this timbre is beautiful, but like way different, especially when you think about the visual component. And it just seemed like it would be so lovely to put together. I, I love those. So I have to say watching this concert was awesome for me because um, I didn't really know what Josh was doing with the monk. I knew you were doing some monk, Josh. I didn't know what exactly what that was about. I knew you had a process with Victor that you were dealing with, but I, I didn't know what that was gonna be about. Mm -hmm. I, I knew Brian played guitar. Um, shout out to Brian. He actually made an awesome version of a, a piece um, of mine called September for a project we did. So I knew your vibe, Brian, but I didn't know I didn't know the the um, how awesome it's going to be with Hunter. Like I didn't know that piece, and I didn't know you know Devin. I had no idea. I knew I had heard some of your music when you um, sent it in to come to Associate that you wrote for Shakuhachi, but I had no idea what your solo Shakuhachi vibe was going to be. Gavin, I didn't know was a composer, and and Anthony, I, I you've been playing dulcimer on some of the projects here. Um, I know Lewis from. Um, when we were in Kansas together, but like I, you know, in, anyway, I, I was surprised by so many things tonight, which is so awesome. Cause a normal soci, I feel like I'm, I'm around in a different way. And this actually felt like it was people sharing um, something about themselves that, that we were all discovering at the same time or something as an audience. Um, and I agree the kind of, um, I've really loved these style concerts where the chat is really active um, as opposed to a concert. Oftentimes when I'm at a concert in a space you know, maybe I'll be whispering to, you know, my friend who's there or whatever, but usually I'm just in my own space. This feels so great to have a social interaction while watching music. Um, so I just kind of, I love the whole experience. And I have to say, I almost feel slightly like an outsider in a great way, because Shelby did so much of the programming for this salon style um, part of it. Um, I just, Shelby, I just thought it was awesome. I guess that's all I'm saying. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. Really, really cool. Yeah. I have fun. I, I would only say that uh, one thing I'm learning and tonight really helped reinforce that it still matters to gather and listen. It's not the same thing as just posting something online and people watching it, which of course is an important way that we all get stuff out there. Um, 
it is different to know that other people are watching with you at the same time. And the extent to which that's still true online is another thing that surprises me and that I'm grateful about. That, that was something that was really lovely for me tonight. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, as we're wrapping up, uh, I just wanted to ask you to talk briefly. Uh, I know you're doing a fundraising effort as part of your program. If you want to mention that and then um, tell us a little bit about how we can find um, the day of awesomeness on Saturday. Uh, yeah, I'll take the part about the fundraising. Um, every year for the last five years, we at SOCI um, have partnered with End Hunger, End Hunger Northeast uh, and the outreach program to package meals um, on the Sunday midway point through the two weeks. And uh, if you look on our social media, you'll see pic pictures posted of what those events look like. We're all literally in this big rehearsal room, gathered around tables, facing each other, like with an assembly line, packaging macaroni and cheese meals that go to food kitchens in the Trenton area. And each year, our goal is a, to package around twenty to 30,000 meals. And I think up in the last over the last five years, I think we just hit the 150,000 meal mark. And it oddly becomes this day where you do something, you know, you play chamber music together, but it has nothing to do with a concert. It's in service of people you don't know and service of something that you don't have to necessarily think about or deal with on a daily basis. Um, and it's really become an important part of the festival. And it's and it's um, it, it forced us to change our mission statement. Sadly, this year, COVID has shut you know, Sosie down. And it's just not safe to gather that many people in a room to do something like that. But End Hunger Northeast is uh, set up a warehouse and so they are they have volunteers where there's like six people coming at a time in a big warehouse and they've been packaging meals since the pandemic shutdown started i think something like 120 days straight with like four days off um and so our our goal is the same if we can get to thirty thousand meals that's eight thousand dollars um if we can get there that would be amazing any donation amount helps and you can go to www.sopercussion.com backslash donate and all of the funds go directly to the outreach program to help fund and hunger northeast packaging the meals on our behalf so again that's www.sopercussion.com backslash donate and josh just um to confirm isn't it 30 cents is one meal like yep, 30, 30 cents, cents per meal. makes one meal i can't remember if you just said that actually but i just nope i didn't when you actually think 30 30 cents. Yeah, 30 cents per meal and it's you know 30 bucks buys 100 meals and i think the stats for in, in new jersey there's uh you know in close i don't know exactly off the top of my head but there's at least a hundred thousand people a day that suffer from hunger insecurity every day it just and, in the in the areas surrounding princeton um and hunger insecurity and, is something which is not necessarily starvation but it's having to decide whether or not you pay your electric bill or you buy breakfast and um, Josh, I, sadly, a lot of people suffer from that. So I, I have to say, at, at the beginning of this this uh, pandemic, I, I have to say, I'm talking to you right now, Josh. I can't talk right now if you don't. Uh, we're gonna wait, everybody. No, I'm just his, joking. his puppies are I coming. Know, I'm in. Just joking. I'm just my, my kids have been coming to tell me good night. So you know, um, but I, just at the beginning of this pandemic, I I have started. I had started to think about other people in our community. That, in our community that needed help. A lot of musicians that have needed help and my mind was there. And once we started to look into this project and realized that compared to this time last year, the food insecurity is just, um, I mean, the levels are rising and rising in our area of Mercer County. Um, it really reframed my, um, not, not that there aren't tons of tons of good efforts where we need to be putting our money, but it made me feel really good about this, this project. Um, and, and being able to raise some money online for it um, because the need is kind of greater, greater than ever yeah. right now. And in particular, kids being home over the summer anyway, taxes food banks because they're not in school where they normally get at least one meal a day. And, and now when to be an issue. in the fall, if that continues, and it has been happening since March at the minimum. So um, yeah. food banks are really taxed right now. And um, Shelby mentioned it there after the festival, I'm gonna be driving to Massachusetts where, where End Hunger is packaging the meals and I will be picking up the meals and driving them and dropping them off at the food bank. So help us get to 30,000, um, any well, amount. Josh is a terrible food. driver. So we need extra, <laughs> extra, we need extra donations to make we up need, for We need extra donations because of my <laughs> terrible, my speeding tickets I'll probably get or something. Uh, anyway, I'll turn it over to you, Jay, but thanks everybody for your support. We really appreciate it. Um, I was gonna answer, kind of tie this in. So she's like thanks, mantra. Shelby. 
and even though we haven't had this moment yet, maybe we will tomorrow or something. But our, I feel like the mantra for Sosi is always, if you ask for help, if, if you need it, ask for help. If you're asked for help, give it. And I think a lot of like how we put together our music, how we try to give our, get, do a food pack, how we try to do all these things, how we get people together. It's like, it all ties in and it's a really cool thing. And I think honestly, online collaboration, thankfully people have been so vulnerable and being like, I need help editing a video. I need, yeah. I need help well, donating and giving food to people. It's, it's a great, it's a good way to get us all together. Um, especially it now. Is. And Shelby, I just, I just want to tag onto that, that she's referencing something that it's Sosi is a tradition called the quiver speech or the quiver talk. And it's something that is a little pep talk before every live show. And Shelby, I don't know if we have a Zoom session set up for the. Uh, we should have a qu Quiver Talk Zoom Zoom session for Saturday, so we can we can have everybody get that because it's kind of a an inside soci thing. But uh, anyway, thanks everybody for your support. We really yeah. genuinely do appreciate it. So anybody who um, doesn't know, on Saturday we have a Day of Awesomeness marathon concert. Um, starts at 4 p.m. and it's gonna go. It's a set every hour um, through eight o'clock. And there's going to be, oh, there already is. There's a link for you to join on So Percussion's website if you go to our schedule of events. But there also is on So Percussion's Facebook. You can go join in on our event for Saturday and you'll get notified when our live stream kicks on. And it, no, tomorrow morning or so, you'll see a full program of like the, all the music you're going to be able to participate in and watch. Um, so just check it out on Facebook or Soap Percussion's website. They're gonna, both of those places are gonna be there and we can send you, you'll see so much music. It's a really cool thing. Um, and I think it's just gonna be, I don't know. It's just gonna be very cool. Yeah. I think, I think you mean awesome. It's gonna be very yes. awesome. Yes, awesome. You can't say awesome too many times. Yeah. Day of awesomeness, it's gonna be the awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Wonderful. Um, thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Um, please continue to participate in our virtual Princeton Public Library programs. We, uh, we love to continue to connect with you uh, even when we're far away. Um, so princetonlibrary.org, uh, you can find our events calendar or follow us here on Crowdcast to find more of our presentations. And um, we hope that you'll be able to join both us and SOCI uh, going forward. Um, to to just really experience more great stuff, uh, some some light in in a darker time. Um, so if we can all do a nice dramatic wave, we'll say farewell and and thank you all again for joining us tonight. It's been really wonderful. Thank you so much, thank you. Nora. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Princeton thank Public you, Library. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you. <laughs>